Hello children, I hope you are doing beautiful mathematics. In this video, we will learn to think with math. So if you are a young learner, you are just starting out with interesting math problems. Let me tell you one important thing. Just like music gives you a different way to listen to your world, Mathematics gives you a way to think about the world around us and even beyond. It's a tool to think in a certain way. And if you are a young learner, it's very important that you learn that style of thinking. Not the formulas, not the multiplication tables but learn to think. So that's why this series, Think with Math. It is for children, especially below 8th grade, who are just getting started with the world of mathematics. You can use these videos to spice up your journey and really get into the groove of the subject. If you are a member of the Chinda Math Olympiad programs, then you're already seeing problems like this every day. You can check the link in the description for that. Today, we will learn to think with math using a very simple mental exercise. It's called the repeated triangle problem. Let's see what it says. Suppose you have a triangle. If you just look at the triangle, how many closed regions do you see? How many closed regions? Because if you look at this triangle, the interior of the triangle is closed. Outside the triangle, well, it can extend to infinity. Imagine it's an infinite paper in all directions. So outside the triangle, it's an infinite space. I'm not talking about that. Just the stuff inside the boundary. So just one. Let's start a process of creating new closed regions. What I'll do is I will draw the midpoint of three sides of the triangle and then I will join them with straight lines. This is the first step. This is step zero. One region. Uh, let me put this a little bit down. Step zero. We have one region. One closed region. Step one. The first step, first time I do something to this triangle, I draw three midpoints, I join them with straight lines like this. And how many regions are there now? Well, there are four regions. One, two, three, four. It's a set of four closed regions. So four regions. That's very good. Now let's take the next step of the process. I join again the midpoints. But now I will also draw the midpoints of these smaller triangles. Like this. Okay. And now I will connect them with straight lines just like I did earlier. like this and now the question is again the same how many regions are formed closed regions so what I, what we can do is we can actually count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 so there are total 16 regions step 2 there are 16 regions. 
That's great. Now the step three will come. You, what your mind is doing is that it is looking for pattern. It is looking for some similarity between what we have done so far and what we will do next. So your mind, this amazing machine, already knows intuitively what is step three. So let me draw this anyway. Let's copy this and put it here. Maybe enlarge it a little bit more and zoom in. So obviously what we will do is we will mark the midpoint of three sides of each of these smaller triangles. And then we will ask how many regions are there? How many regions are there? Can you draw this picture as you see this video? Can you draw this picture in your notebook and start thinking about it? Do you notice the awesome thing that your mind did? It already generalize the steps that we are taking. It knows what we are doing. That's why it's so amazing. You do a bunch of things, the mind will automatically recognize certain pattern between those things and then it can repeat that. Which is really amazing. Here we go. How many regions are there after step 3? So, I'm sorry, this is step 4. How many regions are there? We have 1 region, 4 region, 16 region. Now how many regions? So, you can do this in two ways now. You can either manually count it. If you drew it absolutely carefully, then you can manually count it. So, what you can do is 1, 2, 3, 4, literally too many triangles to manually count them. Is there a better way of doing it? This is what your mathematical mind will do. It will always look for a shorter, a better way by looking at the pattern. So now I'll show you how you can streamline the pattern. The main idea is to clearly articulate what is happening. What is happening in is it from step 0 to step 1 this triangle was broken down into 4 pieces. From step 1 to step 2 each of the triangles is broken down into four new pieces. So we had four triangles. Each of them has been broken down into four pieces each. So four times four. Each of them has four. Each of them has four. So four times four. That's 16. Now each of these smaller triangles now have four pieces. Then now the situation is 16 times 4. It is 16 times 4 which is 64. That is the step 4. So you see what we just did. We looked at a general pattern and we figured out exactly what is happening. That is, each small triangle, small triangle is broken down into four smaller pieces. Four smaller pieces. Each small triangle is broken down into four 
smaller pieces. So whatever the number of piece was earlier, now the number of piece will be four times that. So current number of pieces, current number of pieces is equal to four times whatever number of piece we had earlier. So if it was 16, now it is 64. If it is 64, the next step would be 64 times 4, that is 256. Okay? So we have a pattern. We understood where the pattern is coming from. So the first few terms of the pattern are 1, 4, 16, 64, 256. We exactly know why this is happening because each at each step, every triangle is broken down into four smaller pieces. And what I just wrote here, this one, is sometimes known as a recursive relation. Whatever is happening now is described by in terms of whatever has happened just before. The current state is described as something times the previous state. So this is the core of our learning today. Mathematics lets us think of complicated objects as products or multiples or whatever it is, as processes. The current state can sometimes be described by the previous states. This is, as I said, sometimes known as a recursive relation. And they form a very important part of advanced mathematics. So, whenever you want to think with math, think about recursive relation. They are a fantastic way of thinking about the world around us. Two things we learned today in this think with math. Remember, I'm telling you these are methods of thinking that can be applied to other parts of knowledge, other parts of life. These are not just math that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the method that math makes you to think. It trains the mind in some way. So, what is this method that we learned today? First is we learned recursive technique. What is the recursive technique? You describe the current state in terms of the previous states. That can be done in this particular problem and in a variety of other problems in mathematics. The second thing that we learned is understanding the process is very important. The process in this case was every bigger triangle is broken down into four smaller triangles in the subsequent step. So learning the process of what's happening, that is a very useful way of thinking about a problem and thinking recursively is also an important way to thinking about a problem. If you are new to this beautiful world of mathematics, I'm sure you'll enjoy it a lot. Use these techniques to find out what happens in step 20? You can use a calculator. Can you tell me in step 20 how many enclosed spaces, small enclosed spaces are possible? How many small triangles are possible? How many triangles? You can put 
the answer in the comment section. I'll check and tell you if it is correct or not. All right. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please keep on doing beautiful mathematics. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.